Monday and I've been down on the plot for most of the day. The first few hours I had Willow, my youngest granddaughter, and she had her first real day out on the allotment and she absolutely loved it. She got up to all sorts of tricks and she particularly liked running around, running around, crawling around in the polytunnel under, underneath all the deck chairs, like a little sort of course. So uh, that was really lovely. And then after she'd gone, I got to work and mainly composting. So I turned three of my bins and that was two hours of pretty hard work, but um, that is pretty much all done now. So I'm really pleased with the quality of the first bin of compost and the other two will get turned about five times and they'll be ready uh, in about a year's time. Tuesday and I'm back on the plot again and it's another fantastic day and I had a lot to do actually today. So first thing that I did was I took all of my spare brassicas and gave half of them away and the half that I decided to keep are all spares as I said so I just potted those on just to keep them going but uh, the ones that I planted out are looking fantastic anyway so I don't think I'm going to lose any of those. Then into that early brassica bed I interplanted radish and uh, managed to get all 40 plants in there so in a few weeks time she'll be harvesting those. I also cleared my first bed of Brussels sprouts and I was quite reluctant to do that actually because I do love their blown sprouts as they kind of you know t start to form like a little cluster like a flower sprout I guess you might call it of leaves on the stem uh, that will eventually be the flower and they're just gorgeous at that time you know really lovely and tender so I really like those so what I did was I took everything off that I could right now and I transplanted some of the plants into some spare spaces uh, within the purple sweat and broccoli bed and that meant that that plant hopefully will the, the old sprouts that are on there will flower and uh, I'll get to eat those and cleared that bed and that is now ready for um, to be converted into my summer carrot bed so really happy about that because I so much prefer growing carrots in the ground rather than in containers. The quality is just so much better and they're so much easier to look after. And finally, I dug up enough carrots to last us about three weeks or so and just put those in damp compost in a container in a shady spot on the allotment. And hopefully those will be suitable for eating in April. I've got loads of carrots still in the ground but uh, I'm just not sure whether they will last before they go to seed. And I'm hoping having harvested these carrots, taken the tops off and buried them in compost, they will not can carry on growing and go to seed. Who knows? Anyway, that's the experiment. We'll see how it goes. So it's Wednesday and it's a glum, horrible day, but it's a great day to apply the nematodes for the slugs. The easiest way I find to do it is just to mix them into one of my dip tanks and then that means I just get a nice even distribution as I'm working. You just have to keep making sure that you stir it every uh, few minutes but uh, it's pretty easy. And that's fairly well distributed. There's still a few little clumps and things in there but provided you've got a rose drilled out like this then uh, it works just great. Good time of year to be doing nematodes just as the slugs are starting to move. It's Thursday and I've taken advantage of a few rainy showery days on the allotment to get some of my major projects done for this year and maybe you'll remember if you follow along with my videos that early on in the year I decided I wasn't going to grow uh, very many winter squash this year or summer squash in fact. Uh, so we're still going to grow courgettes and on Debbie's part we were still going to grow a few uh, winter squash but because of the value or low value of them we decided we weren't going to grow very many. And then I realised that maybe there was an option to grow some more and so what I decided to do with cooperation from my neighbours was we took out the fence between our plots and built uh, a, cli a climbing frame a squashed climbing frame and so that is basically taking a dead space 
and allowing it to become productive again. So we're going to grow a lot of climbing squash down there, summer and winter varieties, but not Crown Prince. They're a bit too big and heavy, not butternut squash, but some of the smaller ones. And so I'm really excited about that. I think it will look really nice because basically it's replacing an old rotten uh, fence. And actually ground wise, it's pretty good because my plot is about that high by comparison with my neighbors, which is that high. They've got a path here and I've got a big deep raised bed here. And so we're planting the squash here in the middle, basically where the old fence was. And so the roots of the squash are going to go underneath Simon Nanelli's path and they're going to go underneath my deep raised bed. So they're not going to really interfere very much with anything. So it is really previously dead space and it should be nice and wet because it's so deep down. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm quite pleased with it. And you know these sorts of projects can be quite expensive and they probably not easy to justify in pure economic terms but because we make such a big profit off our allotment you know because you know we were harvesting probably this year like eight thousand pounds worth of edge you know we're making a massive surplus uh, in terms of savings off our food bill so it does allow us to kind of do the odd crazy economically project I don't know if that makes any sense projects that economically are not justifiable but they just look really nice and they just allow us to grow more of our complete diet um, so yeah I'm I say really happy with the way that's turning out and the way that I'm going to work it is that the squash are going to hang over and be tied to the crossbars I haven't put the vertical bars in yet so the other project that I've been working on is my summer carrot bed. So last year we experimented with growing carrots in containers on top of the IBC tanks and it looked really nice, but it worked really badly. Uh, the carrots got carrot fly, even though they were really up high on top of those tanks. And, uh, you know, they just, they, carrots in containers, they're just not the same as carrots in the ground. You know, the quality, the taste of them, the crispness of them, everything, they're not, not as good. I still grow quite a lot of carrots in containers for a harvest in early spring, mid, well, not early spring, sorry, in late spring and very early summer. But in midsummer, when the sun is belting down, I much prefer my carrots in the ground and of course I really prefer my carrots in the ground over winter so I am commissioning a new dedicated uh, carrot bed and that will be used every other year so uh, that I'm really happy with it it is it's got a three inch compost mulch of a kind of soil based seed compost that I managed to get cheap from the garden centre so that should be weed free, sterilized, and that's a great sort of medium to get the carrot started in. And then it's just general compost basically for about nine inches. And then it's landscape mem membrane underneath. The landscape membrane is essential on this site because it's just infested with mare's tail. And mare's tail and carrots just do not go well together. So basically I have only got a handful of beds on here which are lined with landscape fabric and they are the carrot beds and so I kind of alternate between those beds every other year uh, and not so much because of disease uh, per se it's more carrot root fly even with nets I do get a little bit of carrot root fly not very much but just a little bit I don't know how it gets in and to be honest I don't really care because there's nothing more I can do about it um, but because of that, I don't like to put the carrots back in the same bed year after year after year, but I'm quite happy to put them in alternate years. So yeah, I'm super pleased to get those two projects done because it means that really now the rest of spring is all down to clearing beds and planting. And that's what I like to do. I mean, I love working on projects, but I don't like to have to do both at the same time because I just don't have time. So um, that was Thursday and uh, a very happy Thursday it was too.
So this is one of my Calabrese beds. But two years ago, it had New Zealand spinach in it. And New Zealand spinach prolifically sells seeds. And so maybe you can see these little self-seeded New Zealand spinach plants. So I'm gonna prick some of these out now and uh, plant them in modules in the polytunnel where they'll do much better than I do in this bed here. And I don't want them in this bed either, so um, it's just a source of self-seeded plants. So you can see that they're pretty good little plants actually, they've got little root systems on them. And uh, yeah, I find that um, they do way, way better in the polytunnel. I mean, in theory, they uh, are killed by a frost, but obviously that isn't the case because they have self-seeded and grown and we've had plenty of frosts whilst they've been growing. But uh, they do like it nice and warm. And whilst they seem to germinate quite early, they don't really grow very much in the cold frame. Whereas in this polytunnel, they grow away, you know, really quickly. Um, so uh, it's definitely worth doing, but I do prefer <laughs> self-seeding them, well, transplanting these little self-seeded ones more than growing them myself from seed. It's uh, way easier to get them to germinate and they just seem to be slightly stronger plants. And each year when I do this, I get to thinking, maybe I should do more of this. Maybe I should just dedicate one of my coal frames as a seed bed and just do like all my lettuces and brassicas and things like that in the coal frame and just prick them out uh, rather than sowing in modules. So I'm starting my third batch of early main crop potatoes today. These are the last ones that I'm starting in these little pots and transplanting because it's too much fuss and bother after a certain point and you can just plant them direct. But right now we've got hopefully enough potatoes in the ground or in containers to last us until at least the middle of August now. So uh, we're well stocked. And the green ones are Estima, which in quite a few taste tests seem to be the best of the um, baking potato varieties. And on this side, the Charlotte, which is our tried and true uh, general purpose potato. It's good for baking as well, if you leave it in the ground long enough, which we tend to do. So these plants will stay in the conservatory now for three weeks until they're a bit bigger than that one, for example. And then they'll go into the old carrot bed, uh, which is big, deep coal frame, which is currently full of radish. So we've got to get all those radish eaten in the next three weeks. And uh, yeah, looking forward to that because whereas these, which are the early super early main crop potatoes uh, these are just you know a bit of fun really these are a really important crop because these are the ones we'll eat all the way through uh, July and August so um, yeah these are fun but these are important So now the weather has finally improved, so I took the opportunity to get some work done in the back garden. And in particular, what I'm trying to do right now is get it a bit safer for my granddaughter because she's only just over one and she likes to eat everything and pick up like big bricks and <laughs> all these sorts of things. Um, so um, I've kind of removed everything that is kind of non-functional from the garden so that uh, is a little bit less for her to hurt herself with and um, still plenty of opportunity to play on the grass and muck around in soil and things like that so uh, 
she came actually yesterday and she absolutely reveled in the space and just being out in nature and all that sort of thing so that was lovely so it's saturday and i've been full of cold all week actually i feel been feeling really miserable so i've been trying to find useful things to do and this week one of the things that fills a lot of my time is sowing seeds and i got a lot of seeds done i put them up down the side here but um, basically i did a whole load of uh, lettuce trials so with old seeds so I've been having a bit of a problem germinating old seeds which is probably not that surprising but I thought I would try them out uh, in modules with vermiculite so I did some I think with compost mixed with two-thirds vermiculite and then compost mixed with a third vermiculite and then compost on its own uh, some of it just topped with vermiculite. So we'll see how those go. Uh, right now it doesn't look like there's any difference between any, any of them. Um, but I also got lots of my brassicas done. I got my last batch of leeks done. So I'm feeling finally like, you know, obviously I was away last week and so now I'm back on top of things and ahead of plan. I always like to be ahead of plan. So I think that's pretty much the gardening week. Just I'll show you the uh, harvest and then we'll be done. So here's today's harvest, 28 different varieties, just shy of our target of 30, but not so bad for this time of year. So we've got some little new potatoes, that was just a trial harvest to see what they were like, and they're looking really nice. Carrots, red onions, shallots underneath here. Uh, more potatoes, all sorts of different mixed brassica greens, chard, celery, uh, calabrese, purple spotting broccoli, collets, all this massive pile here. There's spinach, more collets, field bean tips, more purple spotting broccoli parsley, carrots, and that represents half of what we've got left now. So uh, we're running short of carrots. And uh, that's the last harvest of the miner's lettuce, the last harvest of the lamb's lettuce. Loads of salad onions, loads of radish, and loads of salad bases so pretty good quite happy with that it's probably well six or seven boxes more than we harvested last week and probably will increase a similar sort of amount the week after but we're really trying to keep the harvests just on this one table so uh, that's our kind of test as to how well we're managing volumes over time. So um, I said that we only did 28 varieties, but now I've added tomatoes and grapes to the salad mixes. So actually we did end up with 30 varieties, which is my target problem solved. And we've got Willow with me today, dressed in her vegetable harvest outfit. She's been helping out me, sweetheart. <laughs> there you go. Well done. So, I hope you like this quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.